Today I've started The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Howard Pyle. I do feel a little guilty starting this because it breaks one of the rules that I've been trying to be strict with myself on, which is don't start new books until you finish the books you've already started reading. The truth is my reading list is a mess right now. I've got numerous books I'm halfway through. I've got very limited time, so I'm only able to read maybe one or two of them in a given week and make very slow progress. And I'm just trying to clean up my reading list before I start something new. But I was at home and I took my books out of my backpack to film some videos. And I forgot to put them back in my backpack when I went to work. And then there I was at work without anything to read during my lunch break. And I've got a, a two hour lunch break in which I try and get away from the computer because really trying to cut down on screen time. And I had my phone with me, but I didn't want to spend my lunch looking at my phone because again, screen time. And there's a library at the school I work to that uh, the school I work at that I have access to with it's not a huge library. The selection is limited, but even within that limited selection, there's all kinds of books that are interesting. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to pick up another book for lunch break, which means I'm going to be starting another book. But I tried to steer myself towards a book that was relatively small and hopefully won't won't uh, I won't be reading this for too long. I, I'm a slow reader, so even a small book like this could well be a month, two months, depending on how busy I get. Uh, but it looks like it's very readable. Uh, this is a book about Robin Hood. Now, everybody knows Robin Hood. I mean, everybody knows Robin Hood. I read a couple of Robin Hood books as a kid, um, you know, like the uh, comic book classic type books. Uh, and was interested in it, and I have been meaning for years now to try and revisit some of the older source material on which the Robin Hood legend is based on. Well, sorry, the, the Robin Hood legend is probably based on oral tradition, but sorry, some, some of the early literature uh, in which the Robin Hood legend came down to us. Now, I was, I was on Wikipedia looking at this just before filming this video, and it sounds like this may be one of the first books about Robin Hood. This was published in, actually, I forget when. I was just looking at this on Wikipedia. I think maybe 1893. I don't think it actually says in this copy because this isn't uh, the original edition. But yeah, I, I think it said 1893. And uh, apparently, the, the impression I get from Wikipedia, and I've not researched this thoroughly because I just picked this up today at lunch, but the impression I get is this was one of the first books about Robin Hood. Uh, so there had been ballads before, you know, ballads and poems about Robin Hood. But this was the, one of the first books, or the first book, to, to make all these ballads into one comprehensive story. Not counting Ivanhoe, uh, because Ivanhoe was, was a, a different story that involved Robin Hood. I think. I, I've, not read Rob, I, I've not read Ivanhoe. And uh, according to Wikipedia, there was another book called Maid Marian published in 1822, which I didn't look up, but uh, apparently not counting that either. Uh, this was apparently, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, apparently the first book about Robin Hood, and Wikipedia credits this with uh, making Robin Hood popular in the United States, which I guess maybe led to the Errol Flynn movie uh, some 50, 60 years later. Uh, it's a children's book, uh, so it should be easy for me to read, hopefully, although it's written in Old English, which was, uh, I mean, I, I know 1893 was a while ago, uh, but it wasn't quite Old English. Sorry, I shouldn't say Old English. I know better. Uh, it's written in somewhat Shakespearean English. Old English is like a completely different language, isn't it? But I, I think people colloquially use the term Old English to refer to Shakespearean language. Uh, it's mostly the dialogue. Uh, so, for example, 
Nay, I forgot not, said the sheriff. Yet all the same his heart sank within, the, within him. But I say thou hast forgot something, quoth Robin. So that quoth Robin is actually dialogue attribution, which means some of it is even sneaking into the main text, uh, this Shakespearean language. Uh, Wikipedia says, I think, that uh, he was deliberately trying to imitate some of the language styles of the old ballads while still making it accessible for children. I, during my lunch break, got uh, about 10 pages into this, about page 12. This text starts on page 3. And it's relatively easy to follow, but there's like at least one word I don't understand on every page. Uh, for example, Robin Hood was arguing with the foresters and... Uh, um, what word was it? Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's usually nothing that impedes the enjoyment of the story. You can, you can still follow along. But for example, for example, page six. When Robin was a youth of 18, stout of sinew. Uh, I guess that sinews are a type of muscles, right? So stout of sinew means muscular, maybe. And bold of heart, the sheriff of Nottingham proclaimed a shooting match and offered a prize of a butt of ale. Now, what is a butt of ale? It's, it's spelled B-U-T-T, -T, by the way. Uh, is, that, uh, is that a barrel of ale or is that uh, a bottle of ale? Um, so th that kind of thing where, okay, you, you can still follow along what's going you can still follow what's going along. Uh, sorry. But it is a little bit... It's, 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 it's easy enough, but I'm constantly having to pause and say, okay, I don't know what that word is. I'm just going to assume it means something like this and keep going. Um, so I'm hoping, again, because I've got a lot of other books I'm halfway through. I'm hoping to finish this up relatively quickly and then come back with a, a full review once I finish. Let, let me just, sorry, let me just grab the camera here and uh, show the book. Uh, so the, the book was written by uh, Howard Pyle, who apparently, again, according to his bio, also worked in art and illustrations. But interestingly enough, he doesn't illustrate it himself. The illustrator is Scott McCowan, who uh, created a 2002 exhibition. So he, he's uh, Scott McCowan is alive nowadays. Um, so this is like a, a new printing. When, when was this edition printed? Uh, published in 2004. So yeah, I, I don't know. There would have been different illustrations in the original. Uh, I'm assuming Howard Pyle didn't illustrate them himself or would have said. I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, anyways, uh, this is the book. It should be hopefully a light and quick read, even given the fact that I'm a slow reader. And then I'll pop back with another video to review it once I finish it off.